What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is Professor M and welcome back to another video. In today's video we will be discussing and reviewing Blue Exorcist Season 2 Episode 2. So with this episode I just wanted to point out something really quickly. I know a lot of people were not fans of Season 1's, uh, uh, season one of Blue Exorcist and that's mainly due to the halfway point in the series. Around episode 18 is when it became filler. I discussed this in my first review of season one of Blue, or excuse me, season two of Blue Exorcist. Uh, check that out in the description down below if you so choose. But I noticed that a lot of people are kind of conflicted as to what is going on and they are not really sure, you know, if they even want to give this anime a shot. Now, I just want to let you know that this series that they are covering is from the manga. I will say this as well. This is a slow paced arc. If you are not into slow pacing arcs, then you probably will not like this arc of Blue Exorcist. But the reason why this arc is, I would say, at least one of the good arcs of Blue Exorcist is because of the fact that it's character driven. Like I said in my previous review, this is a character driven arc that focuses on Rin and Suguro. I just wanted to get that out of the way because maybe some people out there will find that, you know, they were expecting to go into this arc and expecting a lot of battles and whatnot. No, that is not the case. This is a character driven arc. It's going to be slow paced, but it's going to pay off in the very end. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Let's now head into the review. So in this episode of Blue Exorcist, we see that the gang ends up arriving in Kyoto. And in Kyoto, we get to meet Suguro's family. Also, some family members of Shima, uh, the guy with the pink hair. And I also think there is some relatives of Konakamaru uh, there. Um, but it did seem like some of his relatives have passed away as well due to the uh, Blue Knight. Now, the Blue... Uh, night. We will actually see that in the coming episodes to come. I don't really want to spoil anything, but let's just say that a lot of people probably died from the temple that Suguro is from, and many of them were left with Tempe, which is like this sort of mark that is from demons that can spread throughout your entire body and eventually kill you. So it's kind of like a poison of sorts. I could be completely wrong on how that exactly operates. If you guys know, let me know in the comments down below, but I think that is sort of how it works. But like I said, let me know in the comments down below if my description of the Tempe is wrong. Now, when it comes to Rin, Rin in this episode, again, he is still being shunned away by his fellow friends. However, we do see that it seems like he's making some progress with Shima. Um, Shima just accepts Rin as, you know, who he is. He doesn't really care. You know, he's kind of like the calm-headed individual. I mean, he doesn't really see Rin as like this bad guy. Sure, he might be a demon and they fight demons. However, he believes that Rin is a good individual and he wants Konakamaru and also Suguro to you know, see this in Ren as well and not shun him away because, you know, inside they know that Ren is a good individual. But at this moment given in time, even Shima and Izumo, uh, Izumu, Izumi, uh, Izumi, and uh, Suguro and uh, Konakamaru are at this given point in time not really paying too much, you know, uh, respect to Rin. We also get introduced to Suguro's father. Now, from our first impressions of him, he is really not the best fellow who should be a priest. Apparently, he was actually uh, the head of the Suguro temple at the time. However, just due to what he has done in the past, He's been, you know, sleeping with other women. He's been getting drunk. He's just been acting, you know, not so much as like a priest. And we have it to where the uh, Suguro Temple uh, eventually, you know, ends up not kicking out Suguro's father to an extent, but they all comply to an agreement that Suguro's father is no longer fit in order to be the head of the temple. There is just no way. So they end up, you know, 
going about their other plans on how they want to uh, handle the temple. And even Sugro's father acknowledges this. It seems like he does not want to be involved in the temple at all. So this obviously makes a conflict with Suguro and his father because, you know, he used to see his father in the past be this sort of ideal person that Suguro wanted to be. He loved his father, he, um, you know, always wanted to be by him and uh, uh, studied the mantras along with him. He looked up to his father, he really did. But just due to these events that ended up going later down the line, Suguro lost his respect for, uh, for his father, and now they kind of have this son and father sort of dilemma that's going on. And we also get to see in Suguro's past as well on how he became or how he was going to become an exorcist. Apparently, you know, the True Blue Cross Academy, which is where the Academy uh, Rin and Suguro and everyone else are currently training at to become exorcists, we see that the True Blue Cross ends up making a pact with um, the Suguro uh, Temple. Obviously, at this given point in time, uh, in the past, Suguro's father wasn't exactly fit to be, you know, the uh, the head of the temple. But just due to how um, Suguro's father was acting, Suguro was like, "Hey, I have no more respect for you." I'm gonna do me and you know try to go throughout my life finding my own way and my own path on how I want to lead it and eventually we see that Sukuro becomes that now what's kind of funny about all this is that we, we get some comedic sort of uh, events that end up going down this episode especially in the beginning where Rin is like whoa that's your mom I expected her to be you know this brawny mom that is always angry at you and expected your dad to actually be this buff guy who is just as mad and cocky as you but that certainly wasn't the case at all and we also see that Shima getting a scolding from his relatives on how he dyed his hair pink and also on uh, Suguro on how he dyed his hair yellow down the middle so I thought that was kind of funny um, they kind of nailed the comedy on that because it was just as funny as it was in the manga just to see you know the family expressions you know at their own uh you know sons and they're like yo why the hell did you do this this isn't you i do not like the new you what are you trying to do i want you to be traditional you do not comply to the family's you know sort of you know uh uh outlook i, I guess you would say and they're like uh, this is my life i can do what i want you know so i thought that was kind of funny but Regarding that, also when it comes to uh, Shura, she apparently ends up going down to the cellar of the Suguro uh, temple and she ends up coming across what they are truly holding there and apparently it is the right eye of the impure king. They are keeping it there, keeping it away from who will ever come to their vicinity, uh, vicinity who would want to capture the right eye because if it gets to the wrong hands apparent you know uh, like I said before you know the resurrection of the impure king will then happen and that is when we see at the end of this episode we see that um, the uh, guy from episode one of Blue Exorcist season two uh, how he was fighting off Yukio and Ren in the alleyway uh, He is actually a demon and he is looking for you know the left eye and the right eye of the impure king He managed to get the left eye from Yukio and now he is heading to get the right eye in Kyoto So we are definitely going to see some conflict revolving around that as well so I'm very interested to see how all this will play out, how it's, you know, going to be handled from here on out. But so far, the animation studio who was covering this arc of Blue Exorcist is doing an awesome job. But, uh, yeah, I think that about does it for this review. I think those are all the main sort of plot points that I wanted to, you know, talk about in this episode of Blue Exorcist. So, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on what you thought about this episode. And, of course, what did you think about my review? Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And I will catch you all, savages, in the next one. Thanks for watching.